Okay. Chapter 28 The Little Lost Island Wouldn't you like to switch? said Moonface, turning to the old saucepan man, who was just about to bite his cake. Fish? said the saucepan man in delight. Yes, I'd love to fish. I wish we were all fishing for fine, fat fishes in the middle of the sea. Well, what a wish to make. Just as he was eating a wishing cake, for he hadn't heard Moonface properly. Anyway, the wish immediately came true. A wind blew down and lifted up the whole crowd of guests at the table. Sitting on their chairs, clinging tightly, they flew through the air for miles. Whatever was happening. Down flew the chairs in the big wind. A shower of salt spray drenched everyone. Joe gasped and looked down. Bump! He and everyone else landed on soft sand. Rolled off the chairs and sat up, blinking in surprise. The long bearded elves looked frightened. Moonface kept opening and shutting his mouth like a fish. He was so astonished. Joe was cross, and so was the angry pixie. Now what's happened? said Dame Washalot in a most annoyed voice. Why have we come here? Look at all those fishing rods, said Silky, pointing to a whole row of rods standing in the sand with the fishing lines in the water. Waiting for us, groaned Moonface. Silly old saucepan man. Didn't hear what I was about. Silly old saucepan man didn't hear what I was, what I said about wishing. He thought I said fishing. And he wished us all here, fishing in the seas. Goodness, said Beth in alarm. Where are we then? I think we're on the little lost island, said Silky, looking around. It's a funny little place, always floating about and getting lost. But there's always good fishing to be had from it. Fishing, said Joe in disgust. Who wants to go fishing in the middle of a birthday party? Let's get back at once. Ding dong, ding dong, said Silky's clock walking about the edge of the sea and getting its feet wet in the waves. Come back, clock, called Silky. You know you can't swim. The clock came back and wiped his feet on the grass. That grew round. Beth thought it was a remarkably sensible clock, and she wished she had one like it. You know, we really must do something about getting back to the land of birthday, said Joe, getting up and looking around the, the little island. What can we do? Is there a boat here? There was nothing except the fishing rods. Nobody even touched them, for they didn't feel in the least like fishing. The little lost island was just a hilly stretch of green grass and nothing else whatsoever. I really don't know what to do, said Moonface, frowning. Do you, Mr Whiskers? Mr Whiskers was dressed up like Santa Claus and looked very fine indeed. With his long beard, he rubbed his nose thoughtfully and shook his head. The difficulty is, he said, that none of us has any magic with them, because we're all in fancy dress, and our other clothes are in the land of birthdays, so the, magic, uh, the spells and magic we keep in our pockets are not here. Well, we shan't starve, said what's-his-name. We can always fish. Fancy eating fish and nothing but fish always, said Joe, making a face. When I think of all those lovely things that Beth wished for, and nobody to eat them now, really, I could cry. Franny had something in her hand, and she looked down to see what it was. It was a piece of birthday cake. Good. She could eat that, at any rate. She lifted the delicious cake to her mouth and took a nibble. What are you eating, said Moonface, bending over to see. A bit of birthday cake, said Franny, cramming all of it into her mouth. Don't eat it! Don't swallow it, yelled Moonface. 
suddenly dancing around Franny as if he had gone quite mad. Stop! Don't swallow! Franny stared at him in astonishment. So did everyone else. What's gone wrong with Moonface? asked Silky anxiously. Franny stood still with a mouth full of birthday cake, looking with amazement at Moonface. What's the matter? she asked, with her mouth full. You've got a bit of wishing cake in your mouth, Franny, shouted Moonface, hopping first on one leg, then on the other. Wish, dear girl, wish. What shall I wish? said Franny. Wish us back to the land of birthdays, of course, yelled everyone in excitement. Oh, said Franny, I didn't think of that. I wish we were all back in the land of birthdays, enjoying our feast. Darkness fell around everyone very suddenly. No wind came this time. Moonface put out his hand and took Silky's. What was happening? Then daylight came back again, and everyone gave a shout of surprise and delight. They were back in the land of birthdays. Yes, there was the table in front of them, and more chairs to sit down on, and the same delicious food as before. Oh, good, 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 shouted everyone, and sat down at once. They beamed at one another, very thankful to be back in the little, back from the little lost island. What a strange little adventure, said Joe, helping himself to a large piece of wishing cake. Please be careful what you wish, everybody. We don't want any more adventures like that in the middle of a party. I wish my wings could make me fly, said Beth, as she munched a cake. And at once the silver wings spread themselves out, and she rose into the air like a big butterfly, flying beautifully. Oh, it was the loveliest feeling in the world. Hmm. Look at me, look at me, she cried. And everybody looked. Franny called out to her. Don't fly too far, Beth. Don't fly too far. Beth soon flew down to the table again, her cheeks red with excitement and joy. This was the loveliest birthday party she had ever had. Everybody wished their wishes, except the old saucepan man, who had already wasted his. Franny, too, had her wish when she was on the little lost island. When she looked upset because she lost her wish, Moonface whispered to her, Don't be upset. Tell me what you really wanted to wish, and I'll wish it for you. I don't want to wish for myself. Oh, Moonface, you are kind, said Franny. Well, if you really mean it, I did want a doll that could walk and talk. Easy, said Moonface at once. I wish that Franny had a doll that walks and talks. And at that very moment, Silky cried out in wonder and pointed behind her. Everyone looked. Coming along on a small, oh, on small plump legs was a doll, beautifully dressed in blue, with a bag in its hand. He walked to Franny and looked up at her. Oh, you lovely, beautiful doll, cried Franny in the greatest delight. And she lifted the doll onto her knee. It cuddled up to her and said, I belong to you. I'm your own doll. My name is Heronel. What a sweet name, said Franny, hugging the doll. What have you got in that bag, Heronel? All, all my other clothes, said the doll, and opened her bag. Inside were night dresses. A dressing gown, an overcoat, a raincoat, overalls, dresses, and all kinds of other clothes. Franny was simply delighted. What did you wish, Joe? asked Beth. Joe was looking all around and about as if he expected something to arrive at any moment. I wished for a pony of my own, said Joe. Oh, look, here it comes. What a beauty. A little black pony with a white mark on its forehead and four white feet came trotting up to the party. It went straight to Joe. My own little pony, cried the little boy in delight. Let me ride you. I shall call you Midnight Star for the little white star on your black coat. 
He jumped on the pony's back and together they went galloping around the land of birthdays. Now let's play games, cried Moonface, capering about. And as soon as he said that, the table vanished and music began to play. Musical chairs, musical chairs, shouted Silky, as the chairs suddenly put themselves together in a long row. Come on, everyone, 